Hello, welcome to another episode of New Gameplay Today. I'm your host, Jeff Cork, joined today by Jared Juba. Hello. Hi, and Alex Stadnick. Hello, friends. Guys, what are we looking at? We're looking at Astro's Playroom on PlayStation 5. Yeah, PlayStation buddy. PlayStation 5. All right. Uh, I'm going to say that every time we're looking at something on PlayStation 5 going forward. That's not just because it's, you know, like a new console. That's just <laughs> okay. A, that's just the way I say it now. Okay. I want to add like an really echo cool to your thing. voice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So yeah. this is installed on every PlayStation 5 console, correct? It is. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it'll be there when you get it. It's a... But look, okay, so here, here's the thing. If oh. you are if you are thinking that this game is just a tutorial for how to use your controller, you should get that thought out of your head because it's more than that. Really? Um, yeah. The, like it takes well, without without getting into the whole broad thing, like this is essentially it's a like a full sequel to uh Astrobot Rescue Mission, the the PSVR platformer. Okay. So, I mean, it's a it's a game that takes several hours to finish. It has mm -hmm. multiple multiple worlds. When I started up, I was like, you know, it, it gives you some very basic uh like here's how the here's how the dual sense controller works. Here's the different features that might be different. So, I thought I was really in for something that was a lot more uh, you know, let me hold your hand through right. this new technology. For sure. And it's not that. This is this is a fully fledged fun little platformer this is a game okay <laughs> in case you were wondering yeah and we've got like a master on the sticks we're looking at your footage here alex correct correct i uh jeff i know you love my my speed runs that we usually do but this yes. one's gonna be much quicker i promise yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what you're doing here it looks like you're just farting around on the sand but you're actually manipulating the in-game timer so that later the platforms will be perfectly aligned for correct. speed running, correct? <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. I guess I didn't want to want to give everyone uh, a look at how the yeah. sausage was made. But absolutely. Yes. <laughs> so what we're what we're looking at is this. This level is called Cooling Springs. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, like the way the game is structured is it's got different uh, you know, like worlds. And each world has sort of, you know, four or so stages in it. Right. Um, so this this is the first section of cooling springs and as you can see from what alex is doing it really is just sort of a uh play like a playground sort of thing yeah just, and like th this section of the game doesn't have any specific like linear platforming challenges it's more about like hey just fart around for a little bit yeah collect some stuff yeah and and they hide they hide puzzle pieces they hide uh what they call artifacts in the level that you have to to go in and find i'd really try to get on this surfboard and it just never works so oh you can do it I did <laughs> you it. can yeah, yeah i did i did it on my first playthrough and i was like i am not gonna continue this yeah those Your first uh, playthroughs are always the best ones aren't they <laughs> yes yeah most definitely uh and we won't go in depth a ton on specifics but there's a lot of love for playstation franchises and there's some easter eggs in here that uh players should look for because yep. it, it, it really is a great love letter to fans of, of PlayStation. Yeah. I, Any time, fact, oh, go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to say real quick, anytime you see like one of the like Astrobots pointing a camera at something, take time to look at what is being filmed because it is always some kind of funny uh, PlayStation reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically the game's cue to tell you that like, hey, pay attention to something happening over here. Mm -hmm. Um which is, yeah, and, and in fact, if you go back in this footage, right when we landed on the beach, uh, if you look around, you can see a pretty well-known uh, PlayStation character doing his thing. And, and his son. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> his little uh, Astrobot son. Yeah. So you said that, Joe, like, I think all three of us have played this now, but like you said from the beginning, this is not just a, here's how the controller works, but it's more of like a practical application to how the PlayStation could, like the DualSense works. What did you guys think of it? Yeah, that's a good question. I think I think there are some elements of it that are invariably still going to feel a little gimmicky, right? Mm -hmm. Like any time that a part, a mechanic in a game is designed solely so you can, you know, like, like, hey, use, here's some, weird thing going on with the triggers or with motion controls mm -hmm. or whatever. There's mm -hmm. some part of that that always feels, um, you know, like it's, it's not traditional gameplay. So it can be a little aggravating sometimes. Right. But I think the features at least, 
like showcase some uh, some of the potential here. I guess mm -hmm. is the is the way for. I mean, like so the stuff that we're looking at right here. When you're holding the controller in your hand, you can, and you're doing the bouncing, you're holding the trigger down and you feel resistance to it. And when, mm -hmm. you, yep. you know, the resist and release as you're doing the bounce is, uh, it like, it's kind of, it's interesting. It's satisfying yeah. for a situation like this. That's not to say I want every game to start using, you mm -hmm. know, these, these same mechanics, but I think it's, it's a cool little showpiece for, you know, what a, what a clever studio can do to right. make use of those features sometimes. Yeah. What's been interesting well, is I think like all of us or people who are interested in PlayStation 5 up to the its inevitable release, we've all read about these triggers and how they provide resistance and a little force feedback and that kind of stuff. But like until you actually use it, it's difficult to fully appreciate like the potential there, like to your point. Yeah, there are still some times like for me, there was a little bit of a mental hurdle to get over mm -hmm. of any time that I was doing a section that had the had some resistance on the triggers. Mm -hmm. I had to sort of get over the mental hurdle of like my brain telling me that my controller was broken. Mm. Right. Like, oh, it's, interesting. like I'm trying to pull the trigger and it's not going the exact way that I expect right. it to. And there's that, you know, split second of panic of just like, OK, this isn't working the way it should. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it, it is. Yeah, for me, I'm I'm someone who really enjoyed when, especially in the early Xbox One days, when you got a when companies were focused on putting that feedback in the the triggers. So this is to me is that evolution of that, and I I agree with Joe. It took me a little bit to get used to, but like half an hour in, I was like I absolutely loved it. This was a great moment too because like the feeling of gliding on the ice, just the with the little speaker in the controller and then just the vibration and everything. It, it feels wonderful. It really does. Yeah, this the game is, is really just a great little... Again, it's not just to teach you how to use the controller, but it is a great showpiece for, mm -hmm. what, the con for what the controller does differently yeah. compared to, um, you know, things that you just couldn't, couldn't experience on the, you know, last-gen controllers. Yeah. That persistent, yeah, the persistent vibration Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not just. Oh, you got hit, and the controller shakes. Mm -hmm. It's a set. Like you feel your footsteps. You feel. Yeah. You feel you. I mean, like you said, when you're gliding around on the ice, mm -hmm. there's just this, this difference of sensation with it that does a, really good job of conveying as a sort of, I don't know, tactile presence mm -hmm. in the game. Definitely. I think it's going to be a really good thing to, hand to a spouse, or significant other when they say you spent. Five hundred dollars on what you absolute idiot, and there aren't many exclusive games quite yet. You say no, no. <laughs> Feel this, and then all will be okay. Yep. Oh, I'm hoping. There's Alex blowing into the controller. Yes, yeah. finally. <laughs> so, fun fact: I was very confused at this part because uh, I was playing with my headphones on at this point. Mm. Oh, okay. And when you're playing with headphones on, it you don't actually do the blowing in the controller stuff. Really? No, it, oh. it it does that stuff automatically for you. That's strange. Huh. I think I, I don't know if it assumes that because you're blowing on the controller that you just don't want to make or because you're wearing headphones, mm -hmm. you don't want to make a bunch of crazy noise or something. So <laughs> well, how fair. do you blow? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like this. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> ah yes. I forgot I, about I your like, part horse. Yeah, I blow like old man winter in those uh, old like Looney Tunes cartoons. Perfect. Yeah. 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 And I, I, the motion control parts for me didn't mm -hmm. quite land in this. I thought maybe it was how I was laying, but it didn't feel yeah. as, as maybe, well, it felt precise. It's just, there was a wonkiness to yeah. it that I didn't love. But as you can see, it doesn't make you do it the entire time. Right. Well, You've got a thing feels... against frogs too, right? Yeah, I'm a big <laughs> uh, anti-frog guy. Yeah. And it does feel... Uh better than the PS4 motion control stuff. Mm -hmm. oh. My perfect run has come to an end, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. It it's, it's interesting to think back to like the launch of the PlayStation 3 when players were told, you don't care about rumble. And then yeah. just to like <laughs> compare that to this, and just to see like, oh, actually you do care a lot. It is, it's everything to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, at least there, I mean, there's rumble and there's uh, motion controls. Now you don't have to choose between them. Now they're both, now they're both all the way up. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the motion control stuff is probably the, from a gameplay perspective, it's still mm. the most frustrating and the weakest part of the, it's just, it's so unreliable. And when you're playing mm -hmm. a game, you, you, at least I usually want more precision than I, than motion controls usually allow. Right. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But, um, but again, I think, I think in a game like Astro, Astro's Playroom, mm -hmm. it's just like the stakes are so low that if it doesn't work exactly right, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. You know, I would be more frustrated if it were a, if the stakes in the game were higher. Oh no. Oh, yeah. There's a, a, to Joe's point too, there's a couple of times in this game where it's like, you'll have that moment where you fall once, but then you fall all the way down, which mm. is frustrating, but then it's like, oh wait, this is just, this is just cute and I'm having fun and I'm enjoying the feeling of this controller. So it's not like the end of the world, like it is in some other games. Yeah. yeah. And even the parts that are, I mean, I, I would not say that this is a difficult game. No. But the, the, the parts that are difficult are mainly difficult because of motion controls. Yes. Oh, you're going to do it. Yeah, buddy. It's the Alex we all know and love. <laughs> I've got Trash Alex who came out a little bit ago. No, no good. No. I put him like back in one. his closet. Yeah. <laughs> but, said, this is your home. Yep. You know, one of the things one of the things this game reminds me of is looks like Jeff, I know that you like the Lego games. Yeah. It's got sort of a similar vibe to those to me where it's mm -hmm. like it's like instead of being focused on Star Wars or Marvel or whatever though, it's just like it's kind of just focused on PlayStation. It's like a I different love that right there. It's yeah. yeah, it's a different licensee, but for the most part it's got a it's just got a very mm -hmm. approachable, fun, charming aesthetic yeah. yeah very happily surprised Ta -da! there you go there's the prize excellent so this is installed on your playstation 5 should you buy one and you should play it because it's pretty fun i had a very good time thanks for joining me and sharing this experience with people who watch this video You're and welcome. thank you for watching this video people who watch this video gotta go bye wow that person was really good at playing that game those other people were really good at talking about it, too. If you find yourself saying either of these things, subscribe to Game Informer on YouTube for new episodes of New Gameplay Today, every week covering the hottest new and upcoming releases.